Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Dino. You know, it's been a couple weeks now since my friend Eric brought his bright yellow Bronco down to work on the load floor. Now, he's coming back down today. We've got a little bit more work that he wants to do on that. And I need to get the Tinker Shed sort of set up and ready for him. So why don't you sit back, grab yourself something cold to drink, and enjoy Dino's Tinker Shed. That Bronco really is really, really, really cool. Can't wait till he gets here. See you in a minute. Well, now that Eric had arrived and settled in, we can look at the two things that we want to accomplish on this second day of this build. The first is we wanted to construct a slide out tray that mounts to the load floor. What this will do is it will give Eric the ability to mount his cooler, his water roto packs, and also a Milwaukee packout box that he's going to use for tools and accessories. It's going to sit on the driver's side of the actual load floor. Next, we need to create some access panels to get to the original cubby holes that Ford built into the Bronco's original load floor down underneath. Now, these cubbies house both his jack for tire changes the uh, emergency funnel in case he ran out of gas to be able to fill the truck up, but it also has a small storage space for tie downs and other knickknacks. Eric did not want to lose access to these cubbies, so we built that into the design of the load floor, and today we're going to make the cuts in the load floor to actually make that a realization. Okay, why don't we get started by building and mounting that slide out tray? And we're going to do that right now. Yeah, that's going to be... And look, you can probably even get these out. Be damn close. Oh, yeah. That would be cool. hmm. But I think these are... Uh, look, there's some adjustment there. Now that we determined the placement of the slider, we set to work cutting this angle iron out that we would later use to bolt the slider tray down to the main deck. Now I'm going to cut this just with my angle grinder and a, and a cutoff disc. And I'll follow this up with my die grinder and a flap wheel just to make sure there's no sharp edges left on the angle iron. So we got 48 inches, which is a little more than we need. 40 would bring us to there. But that would leave you a little bit of space behind the driver's seat. I don't know yeah. if you need that or that looks about right. Now that we knew where we wanted the tray to sit we needed to take a few measurements to determine what the actual size of the slide out tray was going to be. These glides that Eric bought are heavy duty 300 pound glides and one of them even has a locking tab on them. So in order to build the actual tray we needed to transpose all of our measurements back onto the plywood downstairs and that's exactly what we did. I know that I don't have a guard on my table saw, but I do have a splitter installed whenever I'm cutting like this. It helps keep things from kicking back, and when I do pass my hand through, I always keep it far enough away that I'm not too worried about cutting myself. And with that little safety note out of the way, I'm going to carry on cutting out the pieces for the sliding table. Now take a look how I cut here. See, I push it through, I shut the saw off, and then I move over the piece of wood. So I'm trying to be safe here. Once I get the basic foundation built, I'm going to use this square and lay out some dado cuts that I need to make in order to set the sides of the table in place. These will be used to actually fasten the glides to this tabletop. To make those dados, I'm going to use my stack dado head cutter, and this does require me to remove my splitter from the saw. 
Once that's done, I'm going to set the depth of the dado blade. I think I put it down in a quarter of an inch and then I'll run the dados through the actual plywood. And yes, it looks like my hands are in dire jeopardy here, but the dado head is set below the deck height of that table. So I'm perfectly fine here pushing this through the way that I am. This makes a great finish cut. This is a good stack dado head cutter that I have, but I will follow this up just with a little bit of sanding just to make those dados, those grooves a little bit smoother. After that, I'll run a line down the center of the dado on the top of the deck. I'll use this for staple placement later. I'll cut a couple runners at the right height and after gluing them, I'll use my staple gun to staple them into that dado and further secure them. You can see them here underneath. Now this gives me the platform that we need to get Eric's slide out tray completed. Now that we had the entire tray, the wood parts anyway, assembled, we turned our attention to attaching the glides. We used a couple pieces of half inch offcuts to raise it up a half inch off the bottom of the deck, I guess, basically to orient the glide correctly. And once we were satisfied with the placement, we came in and started to attach it just using some small 5 8 screws, I believe it was. In order to get further down the track, you actually have some holes here in the glides that allow you to reach through and fasten it to the substrate on the other side. It worked really, really good and it wasn't long before we had both of these two attached to those wooden substrates. Once that was done, we removed them and actually attached the angle iron onto the, the glide itself. We had to do this, we couldn't attach it without taking the glide back off. It was a little bit of a pain, but we had the registration holes and now you can see it works really, really well. <laughs> Next, we took the finished product outside and dry fit it in the back of the Bronco. And we also took this opportunity to mark the holes where we would have to drill out and put in some nut certs. However, before we went any further, we wanted to lay out the attachment point placement along the actual tray. And this included things like where the cooler was going to go, his roto packs, and eventually a Milwaukee pack out box. So to start this process, we're going to drill holes through the plywood and then use um, what's, what's called a nut cert or a threaded insert, I guess, in woodworking. But this is basically like a helicoil. So we drill through the plywood and then using this tool, we put the threaded nut cert onto the tool and power feed it in with the drill. It's a really slick process and it's really handy. Once you do that, you just thread the tool back out and it leaves you with a quarter 20 mounting point. Well, after Eric and I got the slide out finished and working really, really well, we turned our attention to the access port for the cubbies in the load floor. We cut out a panel, an L-shaped panel, from the load floor itself to start with. We sacrificed that piece of wood because it was easier to make straight lines uh, with a skill saw than it would have been with a jigsaw trying to cut everything around there. Afterwards, we made a new access cover with very tight tolerances. So when Eric finally carpeted the load floor, well, the access panel just about disappeared other than for the pull tab. So why don't we get started by bringing the piece of plywood in here and cutting out those access panels for the cubbies. Okay, let's do that now. Once we laid out all the attachment points, we brought the load floor back in to lay out where the cubby itself was going to go, the cubby cover. Now again, I used the skill saw here to make sure that the lines were as straight as possible, but you still need to use the jigsaw in some spots where you either, you know, it's a little bit tight to make a plunge cut, or in reality a circular saw just doesn't work. So. I used these two tools in combination to get this opening cut out properly. 
Once we got the opening cut out, we flipped it over and we actually added some additional plywood support underneath for two reasons. One, it will provide a ledge for the cover, the door itself to rest on. But more importantly, it will provide some additional rigidity for the load floor when Eric starts to really load it up. So we glued and stapled all of these together and then ground off the staples because they were a little bit long. So I just used the flap wheel here to clean those staples up. And as you can see, it fits in really well. The cover fits nice and tight. And eventually we even added a support across the very back of the load floor to offer even more support. But I think it turned out really well. Well, this really only leaves one thing to do, and that is fasten the tray down to the load floor itself. We do this just using standard quarter 20 hardware, but we want to be careful not to over tighten these. They are going into a brass threaded insert, so an impact gun like this could potentially pull these inserts out if you weren't careful. But you can see, once it's in place, it slides really good and Eric then turns his attention to mounting on all of the options. So he's going to put his roto pack on here, again just using quarter 20 hardware that threads either into those brass threaded uh, inserts that we put in, or in some cases he used a T-nut. The result was the same, and I think this looks really, really good. Well, after a long day, we finally got the cubby hole cover finished and Eric headed home for the night. The following weekend though, he finished the project by carpeting both the slider and the load floor itself. Now there are lots of things you could do to finish a project like this. Carpeting is one option, but you could easily use truck bed liner, something that you would roll on, maybe a high quality indoor outdoor porch paint or even a really high quality stain or polyurethane. Just something to finish it to make sure the wood doesn't absorb water. Now, Eric's choice was a good one and I think it looks pretty good, but why don't you tell me what you think? Eric, this has been an absolute blast of a project. This is my first collaboration video, and I think it's yours too, right? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so I think we accomplished something really good here. And you won a prize for this build, didn't you? Yeah, there was uh, the first annual Bronco Stampede in Kitchener. Uh, they held it at the Chicopee Ski Resort, and they had a show and shine, and they handed out Reg registration cards for everyone to sign up for it and I signed up. I wasn't thinking anything about it. The registration card on the dash and then towards the end of the event uh, they called my name. I didn't hear it. I was out wandering around staring at the trucks and whatnot but yeah I won a $500 accessory voucher and a car dealer. dealer or car. <laughs> so so that basically paid for the for the plywood in that anyway right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Perfect. Yeah. No, that's great. So if you haven't done yet, if you haven't done so yet, by all means, swing over to Eric's YouTube channel, which is... The Lonely Overlander. And see what you think of his channel. I really like it. It's a young channel. I want to see those subscribers grow the way that you helped me build my channel. And I think it's going to be content that you're going to like. Eric, what can they expect? in future videos as your channel grows? I think moving forward, I want to concentrate mostly on uh, travel and adventure videos. 
Anytime I get away for a weekend, I want to record it all, video log it. I want to put out some high quality uh, productions um, as much as I can, basically. Yeah. Oh, it sounds, it's, I think it's going to be fantastic. And I know there's also going to be some videos on accessories and how to, how to trick out your Bronco to make sure that it's well equipped and ready to roll into the backcountry in Northern Ontario. Yeah. I can't wait. Another true Canadian right here. So anyway, I really appreciate everybody stopping by and all of the support that you've given me over the last year and a half. And if you liked the video today, by all means, leave a comment. It helps me and leave a comment for Eric too to help steer him in the right direction too. But until then, we got a few things to pack up here and a few more miles to put on before the end of the day. So I'm Dino. I'm Eric. And I'll see you soon here on Dino's Tinker Shed. Let's go crawl over some huge rocks or something to this thing. Let's go, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>